What's going on guys? Today we have the final piece of the suspension puzzle from our friends at White Line. These were on back order for about a month, which is not that bad. Most times when things are on back order, you can anticipate they're gonna be out of stock for the next 60 days. Shout out to White Line for getting these out pretty much actually four or five days ahead of the scheduled ship time. So that's awesome. Now, if you're caught up on the past video that we did with the anti-lift kit install, and the front sway bar and the new front end links, then you know that the only thing really missing from this being a built suspension is the outer and inner rear control arms from White Line. And we have those with us today and we're gonna be putting those in. So right off the bat, you got this beautiful, beautiful White Line packaging. And I had made a comment about this before, but uh, let me tell you, there's not a lot of suspension companies that can hold a candle to how nicely they present everything. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Wow. Wow. So as you can see right here, these are some very reinforced uh, sway bar end link mounts for the rear. And I'm just gonna go ahead and say this. For a suspension company that makes such amazing products, please, 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 for stupid people like me, make one side of the bag folded down because these are both open and my dumb self lifted this up and slid this down and basically dropped it right on the ground the first time I did it and I know it's not just me because my buddy did the same thing when he took a look so spoiler alert this is not the first time I've opened this package once we have everything apart we can actually compare the sizing of the two but just from uh, immediate memory of these the factory ones are extremely thin compared to the beefy boys we have here so as you can tell over here we got a really nice reinforced sway bar mount around this side which is really nice and um again you know some really nice uh polyurethane bushing inserts and what that's going to do is it's going to basically get rid of all the rubber in the rear and allow us to dial in our alignment a lot more efficiently which is great because right now i'm actually running into an issue where i can't pull a lot of camber and toe out of the rear i'm uh having a little bit of trouble with that. So this should rectify that issue, no problem. And I'm very excited to see how these perform compared to the factory ones. And having this level of adjustability is huge. So big shout out to White Line. Let's get this installed. Now it's time to get this pretty lady on a lift. And if you have seen some of the other videos, you'll know just how fun that is. Now that we got the wheel and tire off, you can see right in here, I already kind of went a little happy with the WD-40, making sure not to get any of that on the, um, the brake rotor. It's very important. You'll notice back here, I do not have dust shields because I'm running the H6 caliper conversion on the back. Um, so most times you have a little bit of a dust shield over here to kind of make sure that if you're spraying WD-40 on the other side, it's not gonna hurt anything. But that went away because brake power. Okay. This is your toe adjustment. It pulls the tire in or out. So what you wanna do is kind of either eyeball or mark the position of it to kind of preserve your alignment as much as possible. But if you're previously aligned on bad bushings, it's still gonna need an alignment anyway. So it's not really gonna make that big of a difference. So this arm right here is getting replaced. And then this arm over here, right in there is getting replaced as well. So those guys are gonna come out and it's gonna look super nice. The main thing that a lot of you guys are gonna run into problem-wise is gonna be this really, really, really long bolt here. Um, I call this the long boy, and this is one long boy. It uh, basically goes from here and connects all the way to the other side of the spindle with a nut right on this side. So it's probably, uh, I wanna say a good 10 inches long, but uh, it, they tend to kind of rust inside of there, so that's why I soaked this in WD-40 for a while. So let's get to it. So here's a little quickie update. Um, I kind of already got the other side done. It was a little bit frustrating. Um, I'm dealing with a car that is manufactured in 2003 and the current year is 2019, in case you guys didn't know that. So uh, she's about 16 years old, give or take a year. 
um, and I'm dealing with about that much worth of rust because the only things that budge are the things that move when you get an alignment done. So for example, the caster adjustments, the toe adjustments, you know, stuff like that um, in the front or in the rear of the car, those are always gonna come loose bolt-wise a little bit easier than the retention bolts because retention bolts don't get touched. So it gets a little bit confusing. But after uh, quite a bit of frustration, I do have the driver's side done. Passenger side, we're finishing up right now and it's looking good. Everything's looking super pretty and I can't wait to get this all dialed in. But I gotta show you guys something a little bit concerning. One of these things is not like the other. Oof. Okay, so for some of you, you'll be able to see this. For others, not so much. But if you notice, this one right here, it's actually bent. So uh, for the longest time, I couldn't figure out why, why, why every time I take my car to go get aligned professionally on a beautiful alignment rack, why does my uh, my rear settings keep pulling out of themselves? Well, here's why. This uh, sucker was bent. Big yeet to you, sir. But uh, that's okay. So, as you can tell, you got the old ones right here, the old guys here, and these were uh, all inside the car, and these bushings are just rotted, like gone. The only reason why they look shiny is because they're 100% soaked in WD-40. So there's that. So this gets a little bit tricky because you really, not all of us have access to an alignment rack. So that in mind, to try and preserve this uh, alignment as much as possible, the best thing we can do is line this up with the corresponding arm and give it a little twist. Now, if you do this right, you're able to take the bolt holes on each side. You'll notice that one side is a little bit bigger than the other. Um, the smaller side is always supposed to go towards the inside and the outer portion right here has to be enough for that super long bolt to go through. So just think the bigger one goes on the outside, the smaller one goes on the inside. And with this guy right here, you can just imagine uh, where that's supposed to sit. And if you can't figure that out, you probably shouldn't be uh, doing this install. So anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and twist this. Let it keep twisting. Make sure these are both zeroed out too. You don't want uneven, uh, uneven threads on both sides. It gets a little weird and quite honestly, my uh, OCD kicks in and I can't do that. So just bear with me while I twist for a second here. And if you notice, it looks to be about the same length and a good way to meter this is to take like a flat uh i personally like to use a 10 millimeter wrench and i'll just lay them across here and line these up pretty much identically and uh see how they sit in proportion to each other now just looking at this as it sits it looks like it needs to go just one more turn because it's uh still a little off so we'll go like this and there she is they are lined up however this is not the right side this is the right side these guys right here so now that that's all taken care of, you do the same thing with the other ones and the corresponding arm for it. And then you start putting it all back together. And that's the best part. It's also very important to remember, these guys should be snugged up as much as possible. Do not over tighten these. At the end of the day, they will strip. It's very important to not over tighten these but just make sure you snug them up really, really nice. Use a pair of channel locks or a, uh, any size wrench or something like that, and just snug these up real good because you don't want your alignment walking out on you when you uh, are going down to either get it professionally done on a rack or you know, even if you have the tools to do it in your own garage and you go and drive this on the road, it's very important that you snug these up. Otherwise, your alignment's gonna be out of whack after the first bump, and that's never fun. Please excuse the fan noise. It is very, very, very hot in here. However, if you take a little look, these pretty ladies are finally installed. Oh my good golly gosh, they look fantastic. Wow. One thing I really like about White Line that I was actually telling a friend earlier is uh, the fact that most companies will actually just paint these. White Line actually powder coats it. So it's a lot more scratch resistant, which is extremely helpful when you're uh, banging things around and hammering things into place for whatever reason. So everything's really, really looking good under here. And everything's adjusted accordingly as much as I possibly can. I do want to go get an alignment tomorrow once everything has a chance to settle, but oh my gosh, oh my gosh. These just look good. I am so happy. 
One thing I uh, had mentioned earlier was that my control arm was bent and the downside about that is it took part of the uh, sway bar with it on the bend. I am hoping that once this is at ride height, I'm able to kind of heat this up a little bit, get it to sit back where it belongs. And uh, if not, well, I guess I got an excuse to buy a white line rear sway bar too. <laughs> but um, other than that, the only thing I would really note aside from what I was talking about earlier is uh, just really keep an eye and double check all your bolt tightness. Really look at torque specs for something like this. Um, and just, just know your car before you embark on this journey that you'll never remember. It's uh, quite the journey. Um, on another note, on the other side here, you have the inner and outer uh, arms. On the inner arms facing the fuel tank, you'll see the fuel tank, it's right there. There's this little rubber grommet that sits on there. Don't do what I did, I just popped it off and broke one of the tabs. You're actually supposed to just twist it and pull it off and it comes right off. I did it on the other side and it came off just fine. I mean, most times the cars that I work on, they don't have those in place, which is actually kind of dangerous. Um, you'll notice on part of this fuel tank, a good piece of it is actually hammered in and molded um, to make room for the clearance of the bolt. So if you got to get in there with a, uh, with a wrench, you can take it off without putting a hole in your gas tank. So it's important that uh, if for whatever reason the chassis flex is under load, you get some kind of like little grommet that sits in between there. Try and retain your factory ones if you have them. And if you don't, definitely pick them up. They're like 20 bucks. They're not expensive. And it's a, a cheap insurance policy against a hole in your gas tank. So there's also that. Overall rating of this install, I would say probably maybe a five out of 10. It's really just nuts and bolts like everything else, but there are do's and don'ts. And White Line is very good about providing instructions for more detailed installs like this. So it's good to reference and uh, it's a paper copy too, so you don't have to waste ink printing it out. So shout out to them for still providing that and not giving you a little business card that says, go on here for install guides. So I can name a few companies that are pretty big off the top of my head that are still doing that crap and it drives me up the wall sometimes because information should always be readily available in this day and age. And if it's not, then, well, shame on the company. But in the meantime, tomorrow I am going to get an alignment done for this car professionally. Um, when I say professionally, I mean with a alignment rack. I do not own one of those. They are very expensive. And eventually I want to get to the point where the shop has one. That'd be great. But right now I do not. So I got to go to a buddy's shop and, uh, use his rack but that'll be tomorrow i'm super 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 hyped to drive this thing and i appreciate you guys uh staying along for the ride because youtube's gonna be a journey for me and if you have any questions or suggestions content you want to see something like that um feel free to drop a link in the comments or a comment in the comments not a link but anyways in the sake of doing this in all one take see this guy right here these rear beautiful arp studs right here how in the world did i get those in there without pressing the hub out hmm. hmm keep an eye on the next video it'll tell you all about how i did that and yeah cool like comment and subscribe i'll catch you guys later goodbye okay,